Hello everyone. I've been invited to play in a game of Circle of Hands by Run Edwards with uh, Runeslinger, Ivan Mike, 1968, and same old G. They're, we're going to try an experiment like they did with the Veil, uh, in which we'll have rotating Game Masters, and uh, we need to make a cast of characters to play with. Now, uh, the game specifies that each person playing in the game will create two uh, knights for the uh, circle, and uh, I watched Runeslinger's character creation videos. If you are not familiar with the Circle of Hands uh, or want to learn more about the character creation process, I would recommend you visit uh, Runeslinger and watch his videos. I'll put a link uh, below. So here is my effort at creating two of the Circle Knights. Okay, character creation. We roll 3d6. Um, and add one to the result, so our results, our numbers go from two to seven. Um, brawn always starts at a six, so we're only rolling quickness, um, wits, and charm, and those uh, are assigned colored dice, uh, black, white, and red, respectively. So here we go. So black for quickness is four plus one is a five. Uh, witness is a white uh, wits is a white die, so it's uh, three plus one four, and charm is three plus one four. Excellent. So now we look at traits, and um, let's uh, look at the list of traits. We get two traits. So for this character, we're going to pick brutal. Uh, let's uh, format that. Okay, it's a bit better. And uh, what else? Uh, cunning. I think uh, Brutal and Cunning uh, are going to be a good combination for this guy. And let's format that. So now these traits modify the values for our character. Okay, so now we look at the homeland and we are tied for two high scores. So whenever uh, a character is tied for two scores, um, we just, uh, the homeland is Rolk, which is basically the default setting. Okay, so now we add up the attribute scores because we'll need them to compare later uh, to equalize all the circle knights. So that's... Uh, uh, 14, 11, that's 25 points. So now we look at professions and we get to pick uh, two professions. You uh, look at the wits uh, score and for each fraction you get to pick one. So this character gets to, I think I'm going to go with priest and wizard. Again, for each fraction of four, you know, so it's uh, it's two professions for this guy. So once we have our professions, we can determine our social rank. That is based on the lowest ranking profession. Uh, wizard isn't on the table. So we look at the other profession, which is priest. And that means that our character is going to be a freeman. There we go. Okay, now uh, let's look at uh, sex. Sex, you just pick one. Uh, so I'm going to put male. Uh, hang on, let's uh, format that. There we go. Okay. And a magic. Now, wizards have access to all spells. So uh, we don't really need to pick spells for this character. So let's just uh, go with all spells here. All spells, there we go. Uh, let's format that again. There we go. All right, so let's move on to details. Now to get our details, we need to roll our dice again and we add, um, for the demeanor, we add the uh, black die uh, to our charm, and uh, that's going to be an 8, and that corresponds to blunt, 
So let's put it down here. Uh, blunt. There we go. So now for our character's feature, we add the white die to charm. So seven plus one is eight. And that means metal ornament worn at the wrist, biceps, or throat made of gold, silver, or copper. Hmm. All right, so let's put that there. There we go. Let's copy that. Okay. So now let's look at the name and we just look at the red die and it's not modified. Mm. So it has to be bright, brave, soft, beauty, happy, or anything similarly uplifting. Hmm. Okay. So there is a list of uh, names that we can look at. It does mention that freemen have a full name, but are often called a diminutive form if available, and that they use the region or a descriptive nickname as a surname. Hmm. Interesting. Let's look at that list. Okay, so for name, I'm going with Hardrick or Hadrick. Uh, Hard is uh, brave and Rick is power. I think uh, Hadrick is going to be easier to pronounce. And, uh, you know, before proceeding, I think I'm going to roll up my second character uh, because I still don't have like a clear picture of Hadrick. So maybe if we start with a new character, um, that'll give me some time to uh, sort of finalize this character concept. So anyway, let's roll the dice for our second guy. Ooh. Oh, those are very nice rolls. So here we go again. Uh, oops, that's a one. Okay, so it's uh, six plus one is seven for quickness and uh, seven also for wits because it's plus one to the die. Uh, oh, wait, no, uh, wits is, is two because it's the white die. And charm is uh, seven. Oh, nice. Uh, some pretty, pretty strong scores. So now let's go back and look at those trait options for our character. I like this cunning trait and he doesn't have a big score in wits, so he could use that. So that brings it up to four. And um, let's see what else we're going to use for him. Let's go with Brave for our other trait. So that's um, 7 plus 2 equals 9. and add them all up and that's uh, 26 points uh, total again for purposes of balancing the circle at the end of the character creation process when when you get to compare to uh, the other people's uh, characters okay now to determine the homeland we look at the highest score and we see that it's quickness, so this character is from Van Berge. Okay, and we will go with Outdoorsman for our profession. Uh, let's look here. Outdoorsman uh, corresponds to the Freeman uh, social rank. So let's change that. Sex uh, male again. Uh, oops, let's format that. Magic. Now, you have to choose a couple of spells. Um, I'm going to go with Willow Palachek's suggestions in the book for, like, starting um, bundles uh, for spells. Um, 
because um, I haven't really read over the entire uh, magic section. So uh, let's let's see what looks uh, interesting and then get cover. Uh, I don't know how to have a theme to it. Okay, I can't make up my mind, so I'll go with this all-purpose theme and take bless and curse and. Uh, well, we'll figure things out later on. Okay, let's format that. And let's look at our details. And we get to roll those dice again. There we go. Okay, so black die, and we add it to charm. So it's an eight again. Uh, so that means that it's a blunt demeanor. No, oh, that's that's not good. We both have the same attribute. But our next number is uh, seven and three, so it's thirteen. Uh, let's look at that uh, facial scar. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, and these are ranked according to uh, how valuable they are. So the higher the score, the more valuable it is in the uh, culture. And finally, let's look at the indications for the name. Uh, but we don't look at, we don't add it to anything. We just look at the result and uh, three syllables or more. And again, the same rules for Freeman. If there is a diminutive, uh, the freeman will use the diminutive name. So, three syllables. Let's take a look at our choices. All right, so I have gotten with the name of Otomar from Odd Wealth and Fortune, and it's three syllables, but the diminutive form is Otto, and, uh, you know, the freemen usually use that diminutive, so that's what we're going to go with. So now the next step is the arms, and let's read over here uh, the type of arms that these guys have. So, hmm, let's see. Hmm. Okay, so... So staff, uh, uh, freemen are familiar with staff. Let's uh, give them that. Uh, what else would be useful? Um, I'm thinking knives. Yeah, you know, uh, even peasants uh, are, are um, familiar with the use of knives as weapons. So, so that's the basic uh, weaponry that these guys can use. Uh, of course, um, auto is a, an out. Dorseman, I'm thinking of Hunter, so he gets to add the sling, the bow, and the hand axe. Um, these are uh, small bows, not long bows. They're hunting weapons, so I'm adding that. And um, of course, these guys are all uh, knights of the circle, so they receive a particular training just for the uh, fact that they are circle knights. And uh, they're all trained with uh, mail, helm, and shield, as well as uh, one uh, professional or gentry weapon. So, uh, you know, let's get that armor um, and shield uh, proficiency, so to speak. Uh, let's put it over here. And Otto gets it too. Again, this is all Circle Knight training. And now we get to add a single weapon for each. Now I know Runeslinger. Runeslinger has a, a character who is a part of the gentry, so they'll be using a sword. So I am going to give uh, Hadric uh, Francisca. And... Uh, Otto, as a hunter, probably knows how to use a spear. So, that takes care of our weaponry. Let's see what else uh, we have pending here. Oh, okay. Um, so, 
It, it also uh, tells you to start thinking about the physical appearance of these characters. And it mentions over here that the coloring of the uh, characters, uh, the uh, black hair is uh, a rare thing among the people. These uh, seem to be uh, more uh, fair-skinned and fair-haired people, but I want a distinctive look for Hadrick, so I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to name him uh, Black Hadrick uh, or Hadrick the Black. And I'm, I'm going to take off this uh, Hardrick uh, variant of the name because I think that's going to be a little bit tough to pronounce, particularly for me. So, uh, so yeah, Black Hadrick or Hadrick the Black. And now all we have remaining is to craft the key event. And uh, it's supposed to be 150 words, so I'll get uh, on that now. All right, so I proceeded to change the magic available to Otto. I changed the spells to Beast 1 and Perfection, which are Anborion spells and Anborion, Anborion spells, and Hate, which is Urbaja. So I proceeded with the key events for each. Now the instructions uh, clearly tell you to write 150 words. I am clearly not someone who follows instructions because I wrote about 300 words for each, but here goes. Um, Hadrick. Um, her body lay upon the stone altar at the center of the clearing, her skin cold and gray like the damp rock beneath her. Hadrick stood over her, axe in hand. Ava, desired. She was aptly named. Even in death, she was the most beautiful woman the priest had ever seen. And now she lay beyond his grasp, forbidden as she had ever been to him. How Sigiswald howled in anger when he found them in a tender embrace. His eyes had burned with hatred and hurt. Hadrick had thought the chieftain would run him through on the spot. But a priest is not lightly slain, even if he has broken a sacred trust. The chieftain's gaze fell upon the silver torque at Hadric's neck, signifying his status as clan priest. Who knows what dark powers would be angered and what retribution would be leveled upon the chieftain if he were to exact revenge upon this traitor. So Sigiswald struck the one blow he could, the one he knew would hurt his betrayers most deeply, and himself as well. The chieftain's sword pierced his wife's breast and sealed all their fates. Hadrick now stood in that clearing, rain beginning to pour on him. Even the gray sky wept. His duty was to chop off the corpse's arms, legs, and then to sever the head in preparation for burial. It would be so easy to speak the forbidden words of Urbaja, the words Mad Rorik still whispered in his dreams. But that would only be abomination. Hadrick raised the axe to discharge the last duty he would ever ask Glenn priest. And the key event for Otto. Otto ran through the thick woods back to the village to tell Hrothbert. His brother wouldn't believe what he had done. Otto had always been a lucky hunter. He always seemed able to track any beast, no matter what the weather or how old the trail. It was almost as if Otto could call the beasts to him. The other hunters in the village already whispered that Otto must surely be blessed by the spirits of the forest. The lad could move with the grace and stealth of a wolf, and his eyes and ears seemed as keen as any predator's. But today Otto had actually called the deer to him. He had stood there, bow held firmly, arrow knocked and drawn, and willed the beast to stand still. The magnificent creature had scented him, and its muscles had tensed, ready to bolt. But then it hesitated. Contrary to every hunter's wisdom, the creature had locked eyes on Otto and walked slowly towards him. A magnificent kill. Hrothbert wouldn't believe him. As he broke through the underbrush, he saw the raiding party. The Snow Wolf clan had come again. With his keen eyes, Otto could see Hrothbert and a small band of warriors from his own village, laying in ambush, with bows drawn. The Snow Wolves had not seen them. Acceleration rushed through his veins, and Otto drew his own bow, ready to lose an arrow upon the raiders when his brother gave the word. He willed the lead snow wolf to stop, just as he had the deer. But old Sorin had warned him, magic is fickle. 
Suddenly, all the warriors in the raiding party began to howl and scream. To Otto's horror, so did the ambushers. Instead of raining arrows upon their enemies, Hrothbert and his fellows rushed the Snow Wolf clan, some with weapons drawn and some without. The two groups met in bloody carnage. Knives rose and fell. Men bit and clawed like wild beasts in unthinking rage. Otto fled, never to return. The image of Hrothbert, throat torn out by human teeth, burned in his mind. Okay, I just realized that I cannot add... So I mistakenly added 4 plus 1 is 7. I don't know how I got there. But anyway, I have corrected it. Um, uh, Hadric's charm is actually 4 plus 1 is 5. And this translates into a couple of changes. First of all, that would change the demeanor. It goes from blunt to friendly, which is good because now it's a different character, at least in the demeanor, a different role-playing prompt. And also in the features, now it goes to distinctive and permanent work-related injuries and scars. So I take it to mean the wizard ritual scars, which are described in the book. I'm thinking scars, ritual scarring on the face, the arms, and the hands. Uh, everything else remains the same. The name doesn't change because that role is independent of... Uh, of the charm score and what I did is I changed the line in the uh, key event referencing the silver torque so I changed it to the chieftain's gaze fell upon the scars on Hadric's face arms and hands signifying his status as clan priest and wizard and that's it guys now I think that's really it and uh, thanks for watching and go check out rune slingers um, videos on Circle of Hands, as well as visit the Adept Press uh, website for Ron Edwards' Circle of Hands. Thank you.